You okay. just unveiled a whole new lineup of products two, two weeks ago. Holiday season coming up, do you have any incentives planned to get more people shopping using Alexa rather than phones and computers? Uh, I can't really speak to any incentives that we have, but we certainly hope to see uh, a lot of people buy in our devices. Uh, we announced a lot of new devices and features this in the past few weeks, if you've been keeping up. Uh, so we have Echo, the all new Echo, which is now $99. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have Echo Plus, which is uh, a new device with a smart home hub built in. Uh, so it's $149, and it actually comes with a Philips uh, light bulb. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have another device, the Echo Spot, which might be my all-time favorite. Uh, Why? It's a small device with a two and a half inch uh, screen. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of all the things you love about Echo Show, having this glanceable information, but in a smaller, more compact form factor. What kind of problems does the screen solve? It gives, uh, it's still very much a voice forward uh, interaction. We think a lot about voice and voice interaction and a hands-free scenario. And that's still very important to us when we design devices with a screen. But the screen actually gives you the ability to, in some ways, say less back to a customer. So Alexa can be more terse. Uh, and you can provide additional information on the screen. It can also just provide complementary information. So when I asked for the weather today, it told me the weather, but then it showed me a seven day forecast, which is much better than having Alexa read out the seven day forecast when I just asked for the weather today. What are the best scenarios that you see for people to shop via voice? Because um, this is still a behavior that's being learned. Yeah, it's hard. It's, a, it's actually a really hard problem because there's so much to shop for. And how do you narrow down the products that you want? And so how we started that, and, and the team has done a really great job at iterating on that experience, is we first started with your order history. Mm. And it's prime enabled, you know, prime sort of items so that uh, there's a higher likelihood that it's a product that you've purchased before. And, and really the work is on us to provide you back with one, maybe two items that you want to purchase versus giving you a full page of search results. Music is the number one use case right now. If people aren't shopping, is that a problem for Alexa? Does that change the direction of the future of the device? No, and you know, for us, we look at uh, a bunch of different services that are provided on the, de the device. We have our uh, Amazon Music Unlimited. We have Smart Home, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big category for us. You mentioned music as a uh, high use case, but Smart Home is actually growing significantly. So customers are finding it delightful to be able to control their home, and then they're buying more smart home devices on Amazon. And so that's not necessarily through Alexa, but it's just, it's part of the overall experience. So what are the challenges that still remain to get more people to do this? What are the challenges that you are most focused on? I am most focused on uh, trying to reduce friction for customers mm -hmm. and drive towards what we call our customer experience North Star. And really the idea there is that Alexa is more human-like. So it's conversational. Mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, shorten the path from where the customer's starting and where they want to be with uh, you know, less and less work on their part. So is Alexa gonna be responding with the uh-huhs like the SNL skit? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, that, that's sort of a, I, I joke that that is uh, completely what another human would do if someone was telling a very long story. And so, you know, how much further can you go when it comes to just understanding natural human language, whether it's, you know, an adult talking or a child talking, or are we there? when it comes to how much improvement can be made? Oh, we're definitely not there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, it's day one, super early stages. I mean, we like to say we're at the tempe point of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And so uh, I think we'll see a lot of improvement over the next uh, few years even. How so? I just think that technology is there and, and having uh, ourselves included, but developers being able to build uh, features in a cloud that's sitting on top of AWS allows for a lot of compute power, and I think that you'll just see a ton of innovation out of that. So what's missing from Alexa? What's missing? Um, you know, I think part of it is that kind of North Star human, you know, sort of conversational behavior. Uh, Alexa and the skills that we have today are great at reducing friction and making the customer experience very delightful. Uh, but, you know, we, we still have a long ways to go to make it an even more robust experience. You recently partnered with one of your biggest rivals, Microsoft and Cortana. What do you see customers using Cortana that they might not get on Alexa? Is it 
Is it office? Is it calendaring? Is it email? Yeah, definitely. It's in the space of productivity. Uh, I'm actually really excited to see this launch uh, because I think for us, we see this world in which uh, there will be multiple AIs. You'll have AIs who are experts in certain domains and bring another unique set of data. It's, it's kind of like the internet in a way. And so uh, customers will be able to search out experts in a space, and then you'll probably have a broad set of uh, AIs who sort of you know, can handle the breath. Will we see you partnering with other rivals like Google, like Apple with the HomePod coming in December? You know, why not? <laughs> <laughs> How do you make those calculations? Uh, for us, it's very customer focused. Uh, we operate Amazon House for years and it's served us well, but we are uh, super passionate about the customer uh, first approach and we work backwards from that. So if we believe it will benefit customers and improve the experience, uh, we'll work towards it. AI is obviously a critical component here. How many AI scientists do you have working on Alexa? Um, we don't disclose how many scientists we have, uh, but we do have over 5,000 people working on Alexa today. Worldwide. Wow. So what's the, what the, what's the bulk of the work that these people are focused There's on? There's a large amount on the engineering and science side. But we have all, I mean, we, we have disciplines from all over. We have voice user interface designers. You have business development product teams. Uh, you know, it takes a village to uh, kind of build and operate and ship a product. You recently expanded to India and Japan. Mm -hmm. How are those efforts going and what's coming next? Yeah. Uh, uh, they're going. They're going great, actually. Uh, you can imagine I'm a little busy this uh, fall season, so with all of our announcements. And yeah, we're really excited to get uh, Alexa into new marketplaces, India, Japan. So far, our customers, our internal beta customers, are loving the product. On that note, what are you bracing for this holiday season? If it's not, you know, if you can't talk to incentives for shoppers, can you talk about volume? I mean, Alexa is now being sold in Whole Foods. You know, what are you expecting when it comes to? holiday shopping, people wanting to give this as a gift this holiday season. Yeah, I, we are expecting a big season. We have uh, a lot of devices out there. At this point, we've, uh, you know, we, we really like the idea of having a device for any room in the home. And, you know, I think this, the portfolio that we have launching this year is, is a strong one. And what are the trends that you're actually seeing when it comes to shopping in particular on the device? Uh, some of the trends we see with shopping, uh, are people reordering common household goods, mm. so your consumable products. Mm. Uh, I use it a lot uh, for replenishment. Uh, I also use it uh, in a, another way, which is I'll buy direct, but I add stuff just into my shopping cart. Mm. So if I kind of need to pick something out mm. later, I'll just dump it in my shopping cart uh, with a simple, you know, add shaving cream to my shopping cart and select it later. But that's a big, you know, it, it tends to be a big use case for our customers. So is a vision for Alexa sort of the center of a whole network of home devices or is it the home device in the home? Well, we see Alexa as uh, being this ambient, you know, experience in the home. And, uh, you know, customers can invoke this experience uh, wherever they are. We also see that going outside of the home. Uh, we've announced partnerships with automobile manufacturers. So Alexa will be embedded in some of the cars. BMW is one of them. Uh, we have a partnership with the WEN. So then when you're traveling for business and you have, you're checking into a hotel, you'll, you can experience Alexa there. So we, we, we see that going beyond the home as well. Do you see home security? potentially as an area of interest? I, potentially. And then going beyond the home, what do you mean by that? It, more like the, automo mm -hmm. uh, the auto space mm -hmm. uh, is an example, or hotel rooms. Obviously, Amazon and Alexa got a huge jump on this market, but now you know the competitors are there. What are you doing to stay ahead? Like, is there anything that you see your rivals doing that you that is, that is impressive? You're going, huh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm impressed with uh, a lot of the innovation that's happening in this space. We are super focused on uh, building new features and skills for our customers. We stay very focused on that. And we think in the end, customers will win with a, the innovation that's coming out of the space.